Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, I'm going to tackle something that has been around for decades. Do you actually gain 3dB by doubling cone area? And do you actually gain 3dB by doubling power? This is something that has been around for a very, very long time. And it's uh, kind of a theory that uh, is a general guideline to go by. So we're going to test, does it actually happen? And if it does, at what point does it stop? So here is our setup. We've got one of our brand new EMF Audio Ghost 8s in an enclosure that is most definitely not appropriate for it. But because we have one of these in one of these boxes and I happen to have another identical box, we can check uh, going from one sub to two subs without changing the enclosure. Now, why wouldn't we scale uh, to just do a, a two sub box that's like this? Because then we have other factors uh, on how the box is shaped, uh, how it would load, um, you know, from doing uh, two ports versus one port. You know, it's the same volume. There's different box characteristics that could change. So we're going to have two identical boxes that I will set another one right here. In doing that, we can keep everything consistent with exactly one sub and exactly one box and exactly two subs and exactly the same two boxes. So we're going to do some SPL metering. Uh, I've got our America 12K. It's going to supply power to these. Now keep in mind, we're not going to need anywhere near this amount of power. These are 150 watt rated eights, but they are single four ohm. So to ensure that I can get every bit of power um, at regardless of the impedance uh, load, whether it be four ohms or 12 ohms, we've got plenty of power on deck and we're going to check uh, first at 100 watts, then 200, then 400. And you'll notice that's doubling it every time. Uh, I don't know that we could go over 400, maybe we can. Uh, 800, I'm pretty sure is not gonna happen in this enclosure, but we'll have some good test points. So we're gonna check 100, 200, 400, see what happens, does it double every time? And then we're going to put a second sub in and do the exact same power levels because then we're only doubling cone area and that should theoretically gain 3 dB at the same power. And then from there, we will double those power numbers. So we're getting the same amount of power to each sub. So we'll do 200, 400, 800, and see what happens there. Uh, we've got another camera set up up here so you can see what's going on. And let's get to some testing. It would seem, if you were paying attention, that we did not gain 3 dB by doubling power. We in fact gained 2.2 between 100 and 200, uh, 1.7 between 200 and 400, and 1.0 between 400 and 600, which theoretically uh, should be 1.5 because we're only going up in 50% power. Uh, so we didn't. Uh, get theoretical on that either. I don't want to go above 600. I'm I'm pretty sure we'll be at mechanical limits uh, So now we can try two subs and see what happens uh, For that this is what we've got two identical boxes. Yes, we have different speaker wire. No, it will not matter Yes, this is smaller than this, but we're talking about very low power uh, It's it's not gonna matter at all. So before you throw that excuse out there or whatever result ends up happening here. No, that doesn't matter. Uh, we are running the amp uh, down to two ohms, which is fine because we're not making a ton of power anyway. Uh, so here you go. Two brand new subs. Well, this one's been played now, but two brand new subs. So we don't have to worry about uh, anything weird about one being damaged or anything like that. 
This one obviously has zero play time, uh, but as you saw in the video that I put up a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a matter of two tenths over quite a bit of uh, play time. Uh, so worst case, there might be a few tenths and this one being new uh, versus the other one uh, being played as little as it has been, which you've seen on video. Uh, so let's get to testing two subs and see what happens. So with two subs, we had something a little bit shocking. We had the same power level, so we only doubled our cone area, and we gained exactly 1 dB, exactly 1 dB, 0.9 dB, and 0.8 dB. So the louder we were getting, the less we were gaining from having two subs. That wasn't the 3 dB. It was a third of that, and less than a third of that. So why did we not gain 3 dB? Um, the numbers are pretty consistent from one to the other. Even if you look at the SPL gain from power to power, uh, it's within one tenth. Uh, so that could be five hundredths that was rounding or four hundredths that was rounding. Um, so it really could have been within one hundredth of a dB, which if you're like one or you know a few watts off, uh, it could affect that. But it was nowhere near what should have happened. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave both boxes sitting in here and we're gonna try playing just the one on the left. And then we may try just the one on the right and see if there's a difference between the two. Uh, but we're just gonna leave it there, not connected, see what happens. Well, that was unexpected. Uh, the box simply being in place uh, at the 100 watt level lost 1.3 dB. At the 200 watt level lost 1.7 dB. At the 400 watt level lost 2 dB. So the box just being there, the louder it gets, the more you lose. That makes absolutely no sense at all, but that's what happened. Um, kind of proving that you don't necessarily gain 3 dB. So now I'm gonna swap it over to the other sub, so the ones in the middle, uh, instead of uh, towards the outside of the car, and we'll do the same exact test and see if we get the same result. You have insurance on your head because your mind's about to be blown. This one's nuts. So with the other sub, it's the only one playing, the other box just sitting there. At 100 watts, we lost 3.6 dB. At 200 watts, we lost 3.8 dB. And at 400 watts, 4.6 lost follows the, as it gets louder, it loses more. But wow, those are huge losses by just having the other box there not playing. That's absolutely insane. So why is this happening? I don't know. Uh, that's something I'm gonna work and figure out because that's a huge loss for just having a box sitting there uh, so I think what I'm going to try now is uh, either spinning one or both of the boxes around the other direction 
um, and try one sub playing and try both subs playing uh, and see what happens there. There's obviously some kind of phasing cancellation, something that's occurring um, as a result of just simply being there. Um, so we're gonna dig into that some. And here's the setup. Uh, this one is not connected at all. Uh, for me to connect these wires and try it, which I may do, I will have to move it forward a little bit, but I wanna have it in the exact same dimensional space uh, for this test with only that sub playing. And uh, we'll see what we get. is a little bit weird in itself so flipping that around uh, it is louder than it was uh, spun around even with just the one sub in that location uh, 1.2 louder uh, 1.3 louder across the board there and even compared to just having the one sub without the other box in there again in that position uh, within a tenth at 100 watts down four tenths at 200 watts, down seven tenths at 400 watts. So physically being there, uh, we lose a little bit more as power goes up or an SPL goes up, which is consistent with two boxes being in there. But all we do is flip that around and gain back quite a bit. Uh, so I'm going to connect the other box in that same position. So it won't be firing backwards, won't be firing forwards. I'm going to do it with a reverse phase uh, because one is firing this direction and one is firing this direction. So one has to be 180 degrees out of phase uh, from the other one. And if you said that's the mistake that was made as to why it lost to begin with, you obviously were skipping around the video and didn't see the last result of massive loss by the box just being there. So I'm gonna get those connected and uh, we'll give that a shot. Okay, so this gave a very, even more weird result. At 100 watts, uh, from the same position, just connecting the other sub, 100 watts lost 3.3 dB. 200 watts lost 2.7, and 400 watts lost 2.1. So after connecting that other sub, the more power you add, and the louder it gets, the less you lose, which is the opposite of the other direction. However, it's still a massive loss uh, from it being connected. It doesn't make sense. Those were some completely unexpected results. And as you saw, there was not a single time in this case where doubling power gained 3 dB or when doubling cone area gained 3 dB, and even changing positioning. There was a massive change in SPL, even from just the box being there, and flipping it around. So that's all a number of factors that can go into why it does or does not do that. There are instances, and I've seen it quite a few times, particularly at lower power levels where you double power and you do gain 3 dB. This is just not one of those times for whatever reason. So the theory is not completely wrong. It does happen. And there are cases where you can double cone area and you do gain 3 dB. But as you saw in this video, uh, there comes a point where even those same gains are not linear. Got to a point where you put a lot more power on it and you don't gain as much as you should. And that could be because of mechanical limits or thermal compression, or maybe the box is just built to where it works better at a lower pressure than a higher pressure, or maybe it works better at a higher pressure than a lower pressure. Maybe you actually get closer to the linear gains uh, when you get to a higher level. There's a ton of factors in there, but it does go to show that you cannot go off of only the theory and just think, I'll just add another sub and gain three, or I'll just double my power and gain three. That's not how that works. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, 
consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you get a notification every time we have a new upload. Make sure you shop emfcaraudio.com for all of your car audio needs, including all of our pre-orders for low ballers and band hammers and uh, maybe YOLO V2s. And uh, we still got our swag six and a halves in stock and our new Ghost 8s as seen in this video for $100 a pair. All those are in stock. Also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook in the links below as well as our Patreon where you can help support the channel so we can do more cooler videos that just take a lot more money for various things. Check out all of the new products that we're carrying and we're adding some as we're going along here. Uh, we've added MB Court and High Phonics to the list as long as still having excess power and SBC. And if you have a suggestion for a brand that we should also carry, comment below. If you have any questions or uh, theories of why we got the results that we got, comment those below. And I'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.